Hello. This is Dr. Sabag of the VMR Research Foundation reaching out to all of you who are members of the VDM project. This is our annual end of the year summary that uh, we would like to provide as a way to reach out and thank all of you for your support of the past and your interest in listening to this transmission, but also in continuing your support of the VDM project and the research organization behind it. Um, one of the main reasons to reach out at this time is, of course, to wish everyone a happy holiday season and happy and healthy new year, but also to let you know that you're not forgotten, that your problems are taken very seriously by many of my colleagues and me, and that we are striving to improve our understanding of uh, vision degrading myodysopsia, which is the term we use clinically to refer to uh, clinically significant vitreous floaters. And we are trying to understand the origin of this condition and find better ways to diagnose this disease. And make no mistake, we believe that this is a disease in contrast to many other of my uh, uh, medical colleagues. Uh, but with better understanding of the causes and origins, we can develop better ways to diagnose, but also better ways to treat, uh, less invasive and more effective ways. So I'm gonna make a few comments updating you on the progress that we made and the uh, projects that we're working on. And I separate them into two categories, the first being scientific and the second being clinical. We've got some very exciting results from a collaboration with uh, optical engineers at the University of Murcia in Spain. The um, laboratory headed by Professor Pablo Artal and the project is headed by Dr. Alba Paniagra Diaz, who is an expert in measuring light scattering. The reason light scattering is important is because floaters come from an interference with the passage of light from the front of the eye to the back of the eye. Right in the center of the eye is the vitreous body, which has abnormalities in patients complaining of floaters that cause the light to scatter and shadows to form and vision is disturbed. So we took a series of patients with this condition, with this disease, vision degrading myodysopsia, and operated on them to remove the vitreous and excise the origin of the floaters, and then took that to the laboratories in Spain for analysis. And we successfully correlated the light scattering parameters with the clinical evaluation before vitrectomy surgery and find, found very, very uh, uh, interesting results, a very positive correlation. The details will be coming out in a publication. We've submitted the manuscript to a top journal in eye science and research and uh, are awaiting their comments. And there'll be a bit of a back and forth, but hopefully in the coming months, we'll be able to share those details with the world and uh, shed light on the origin of uh, vision degrading myodysopsia. We're also interested in studying the movement of vitreous because many of my patients describe that their floaters are worse when they read or when they drive. And one of the reasons for that is the horizontal eye movements that are involved in reading and driving displace vitreous and bring opacities into the center of the optical axis and they become more bothersome. So one of the considerations that has actually been overlooked is how does vitreous act when the eye moves? How is it displaced? And is it different in different people? So I'm working with Dr. Alex Engelman and Professor Alfredo Sedun at UCLA on using MRI of patients who move their eyes and watching what happens to the vitreous with magnetic resonance imaging. And uh, we've characterized some very interesting findings and have 
submitted those findings to a, um, a couple of research meetings that are going to be happening in the next six months and uh, discuss the results with our colleagues and get a better understanding of how vitreous moves when the eye moves and how that might be different in patients who have myopia, which is a significant cause of VDM, uh, but also in aging individuals. So I'm, I'm excited about those two scientific projects and uh, we'll look forward to sharing the results with the, with the world. Um, as you probably have heard from us in the past, we're involved with scientists at the uh, Pharmaceutical Sciences School at the University of Ghent in Belgium, a Dr. Felix Sauvage and a professor, uh, uh, Stefan de Smet, who is the head of that department, are very interested in using nanoparticles to treat uh, the opacities that cause vitreous floaters and VDM. I've recently sent more samples that I've excised from patients' eyes who underwent vitrectomy for this disease, and they are being studied in the laboratories in Ghent, and uh, new methodologies to treat are being developed. So that, that's all very exciting and very scientific and, and basic uh, research. In the second category, the clinical category of the projects that we're working on, I'm very excited to share some recent findings that my collaborators at the Nicholas Copernicus University in Torun, Poland have uh, sent. Uh, they have finally been able to alter and develop the optical technology to use optical coherence tomography, which is called OCT uh, in many places in the world, uh, almost every eye care facility has an OCT machine. But up until now, that OCT machine technology could only image the back of the vitreous or the front of the vitreous, that area right behind the lens in the front of the eye. Uh, at my request and at my suggestion and encouragement, the optical engineers in the Pernicus laboratories have been able to now create a system that images from front to back the entire vitreous. It is only in two dimensions, but that's the first step in getting a three-dimensional representation of the entire vitreous body, which will help us greatly in understanding where are the opacities and how do they move and uh, how do they correspond to patient unhappiness and to the impact on vision specifically contrast sensitivity function. And I'm very excited to be working with uh, Dr. Daniel Ruminski, as well as uh, his professor, Irek Grokowski, who heads up that laboratory in Torun, Poland. We are working and are almost complete the <clears throat> project in developing a vitreous floaters functional questionnaire. Up until now, we've been working with the National Eye Institute Visual Function Questionnaire, which is, quote unquote, the gold standard. But the problem with that questionnaire is that it's not specific to what ails patients who have vision degrading myodysopsia. So we have developed a uh, questionnaire based on information provided by One Clear Vision, a, a patient organization in London, who have provided us with information that we use to develop a questionnaire called the VFFQ, the Vitreous Floaters Functional Questionnaire. And we've done many studies in hundreds of patients. I think we have over 700 patients who have done completed both the National Institute VFQ25 as well as the VFFQ. And we are comparing the two and preparing a manuscript for publication to present the results to the world. The value of something like that is that when it's fully developed, patients will be able to assess for themselves how their condition compares to hundreds of other patients in our database. And then that could be also utilized in triage to identify people with a high likelihood of needing some form of intervention and therapy as opposed to patients with a low likelihood based upon how they fill out the questions in the questionnaire. 
Another project that we're going to be undertaking in this coming year is designed to identify the prevalence of floaters in the general population. The reason that's important is because, as you probably already know, not just the medical profession, but also industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the laser technology industry, the diagnostic uh, ophthalmic industry um, have largely ignored vitreous and ignored vitreous floaters as a problem. And one of the reasons for that is because we don't really know what the true prevalence of this condition is in the general population. And so there is a project organized by Matt Mazuski of Columbia and Mike Smith of Indiana University to get data that will give us information as to the prevalence in the general population of this uh, condition. And that may provide the data that drug companies and technology companies would find motivating and maybe even governments as well and spend more time, effort, and money in the development of better understanding, better diagnostics, and ultimately better therapeutics. With respect to therapeutics, as you probably are familiar, the standard of care is vitrectomy surgery for excision of the opacities that cause the vitreous floaters and the disease vision degrading myodysopsia. But you are probably also aware that YAG laser vitreolysis is being performed. I am collaborating with a vitreoretinal specialist such as myself in London, and we have uh, raised industry support for a project on um, YAG laser vitreolysis. The details of that project will be the subject of our next transmission in a month or two from now. And I'm very pleased that Professor Paolo Stanga in London is going to be joining us for that uh, next session that we'll be sharing with the world. So that's just a brief update on the projects that we uh, are working on and are very excited about. Uh, the main message that I wanted to deliver is that you are not forgotten, you are not ignored, and your problems are real. They're not imagined, and we care enough to be spending time and effort uh, as well as money on this problem. And so we greatly appreciate your support of the VDM project and the VMR Research Foundation. And uh, please accept our best wishes on behalf of Fabio Gallerani, who has been indispensable in developing the VDM project and conducting it very successfully. Fabio and I wish you a very happy holiday season and a very happy and healthy new year.